games and I'm coming to you as usual from St. Louis on a very special day because today we are starting our 10th anniversary celebration here at Stonemeyer Games. <clears throat> the 10th anniversary is somewhat an arbitrary date, but uh, the way I see it, uh, I launched a Kickstarter project for Viticulture back in 2012 and it was August when I launched it. I think it ended in early October. It was a long campaign and we reached our funding goal on September 10th. So that's three days from now. And it, it was at that point that we officially, in my mind, became a company. Because up until that point, if we hadn't successfully funded, probably nothing would have happened. We wouldn't have had Stillmeyer Games, even though we would have had a, you know, a designed game, but we wouldn't have had a company. Uh, so it is, I, I view it on that day, September 10th, 2012, as the, the beginning of Stillmeyer Games. And thank you for being here today to join me for our 10th anniversary celebration. It's incredible to me that, that we've uh, that we've come this far and it really is all thanks to you. Um, yeah, I mean, everything we do is for you and without you, we wouldn't exist as a company. So thank you so much for, for being here. I sent out our 10th anniversary September 2022 e-newsletter a few minutes ago. You can find it in the description of this video if you wanna check that out. I have a lot of stuff to discuss today. I'll have that stuff up on my second screen, including the, the e-newsletter. And as you can see here, off the to the corner of my, my screen, you can see one of the two new games, or not new games, but games that we announced today. One is the Between Two Cities Essential Edition, which is a consolidated version of Between Two Cities that includes all the things for Between Two Cities all in one box. Um, and the second new game is Smitten, a game that I designed specifically for the 10th anniversary celebration. Um, let me check out comments in a second, then I'll come back and tell you a little bit of backstory about why things happened the way they did in today's e-newsletter. There's a little bit of backstory there that I'll try to get through quickly, but let me see over here. I see a lot of people congratulating us, which I really appreciate with the 10th anniversary celebration. That is, means a lot to me that, that you're here to celebrate it, that you're here moving forward, that you've been here in the past, that you'll be here moving forward to celebrate it with us. Um, that means a lot to me. Thank you so much. So I'm seeing a lot of those comments. Um, let me scroll through real quick to see if there are any questions that I should answer before I jump in. Let's see, Dave said, did I see Elizabeth's, Elizabeth Hargrave's appearance on Keith Law's podcast? I didn't see that yet, but that's really cool. Uh, she said, there's a decent amount of Wingspan talk as, as well as her new game, The Fox Experiment, which I backed yesterday. That's on my note, notes of, note of things to talk about. Um, yeah, The Fox Experiment, Elizabeth's new game from Pandasaurus is live on Kickstarter right now. I'm really excited to play it. Um, so yeah, let me tell you a little bit of backstory real quick about some of the things that happened because I sent out a new newsletter today and one to champions yesterday that basically said, uh, we have all this stuff that we're really excited to share with you and we're going to share it with you, but we can't sell it yet because the shipment hasn't arrived. This is kind of the story of the pandemic, right? In this case, it is, uh, it was a, a little frustrating that it hasn't arrived, although I've come to be used to delays at this point. But the shipment carrying Between Two Cities Essential, Smitten, and the three new promos for Rolling Realms departed from China in early July. And for every update that we had from our freight shipping company, it was supposed to arrive in mid-August, which is plenty of time for us to do this celebration with these products in stock. And then in mid-August, well, pretty much to the day that it was supposed to arrive, we heard from the freight shipping company that it wasn't going to arrive until early to mid-September instead. And for a while, we were hoping that would be mid, early September, so we could we could launch these things today. Um, because the kind of the big hook here is that for our 10th anniversary celebration, we are going to offer Smitten with every web store order, but we can't do that until we actually have Smitten in our web store, in our fulfillment centers. Uh, if Smitten for free, this is a free game that we will give you with any web store order um, as soon as Smitten arrives and it hasn't arrived yet. And so we were hoping that would be this week, maybe early next week that it would arrive. And then yesterday, yesterday morning, I got the news that the ship isn't even going to unload at port in, uh, in California until at best uh, it, it, around September 14th. So that'll have it arriving in St. Louis probably the week of September 19th. Uh, and so with that news in hand, we decided to go ahead and send the Champion e newsletter, send today's e newsletter, to share all this stuff with you that I've been so excited to share with you. Um, you can find the, the, the rule books on our website, you can find the web pages of these products, uh, but we're not actually going to sell any of them until they arrive. Um, 
partially because that's how we do things. We don't wait to sell, we don't sell things until we actually have them in stock at our fulfillment centers, and partially because we're giving away Smitten for free for every web store order. And we're also giving a 10% discount on every web store order as soon as these products alive, uh, arrive. So that's kind of the context of why the newsletter is maybe a little weird that we're announcing all this stuff that we can't actually sell in any way to you yet um, and why we're delaying some of the, the things. That's the context for it. I'm sorry about that. Uh, and you will hear from me again if you, if you subscribe to us as a champion or uh, to our main newsletter, you'll hear from us at a time in the future, I don't know the date. I'm not even trying to name a date at this point, but when these things arrive, you'll hear from us. Yeah. So that's that's what's going on here. Uh, George says, what type of box or cardboard is Smitten? Is it like the a Rolling Realms promo pack? Actually, no, George, we're doing, we did something a little bit different for Smitten, and we might explore this packaging in the future, perhaps for a Rolling Realms promo pack. But for Smitten, we wanted an entirely eco-friendly game. So Smitten uses only paper components. The envelope it comes in is paper. Um, so there's a paper envelope here, and uh, it has a little rule book that folds out. It is a, a one-page rule book, very simple game. This is a cooperative game for one to two players that I designed specifically for the 10th anniversary. Um, so one a uh, two-page rule book, solo rules on one side, other rules on the other, and then there's just 18 cards in the game. Um, and uh, the art is done by Vincent Dutrait. It was fun to work with Vincent on this game. So these cards form a nine, uh, a three by three grid or two three by three grids that are meant to be identical. Uh, it's a limited communication, a cooperative game, my favorite style of cooperative game, where the main communication, or really the only communication you give to your uh, to your partner is uh, whether or not you want to play a card or not. So you can kind of say, I, I, I want to play a card, I don't want to play a card, and then you'll play a card. I'll, I'll put, pull this back out and give you an example. So I'll play a card. Say I play this card. You can see uh, the King Ludwig on the card. You, you play this card, and then the instructions on the card are instructions that your partner must follow. So if I play this card, it has to go in the grid adjacent to another card right here, and it says your partner must place a card in either grid so that it completes a row or a column. And so when I play this card, I need to hope that my partner has a card that they can play um, in such a way that meets those description, that description. If you, if you accomplish that, then you continue to move forward towards completing both grids and then you win the game. Or if your partner can't do that, then you instantly lose the game and you play again, hopefully. It's only like a little 10 minute cooperative game. Um, you can find more information about it on our website. Yeah. I'll scroll down looking at uh, looking at comments here. It looks like Brian is joining us for his first live chat. Brian, thanks for chiming, chiming in today for your first live chat. And uh, yeah, just scroll through looking for questions right now to see. Uh, James says, should the link in the champion email for the new shirt be working? And it should not. If you look above that link, so it was a mistake for us to leave that link in, but we changed a lot of things last minute yesterday as I was just talking about. We shouldn't have, we shouldn't have removed that link. But above that in the champion newsletter, you can see a bunch of bold text that says that these products are not available yet. Um, uh, in fact, I, I, none of those links should work yet. I think maybe we left in a, a bunch of links by accident there that should have been removed or maybe just a few of them. I can't remember if we put the smitten. Let's see what we did. I'm looking at the champion newsletter right now. The champion newsletter. Uh, yeah, it had a, it has a few links that should not be there yet. Um, because as noted above in the, new, in the newsletter, those products have not arrived yet. But once they do arrive, you will hear from us, um, including the champion t-shirt for champions, and we'll let you know when they're ready. The shirts are actually here, but we don't wanna sell them to you until we can include smitten for free in that order. That's why we're waiting a little bit. Blake says, what's been the Still Mario Games highlight of your last 10 years? Oh, there are so many highlights, and I actually discuss a bunch of them in a video that I posted to get today. It was a follow-up to a video I did a couple years ago called A Brief History of Still Mario Games. And in today's video, I did A Brief, Brief History Part 2 that covers the last three years, it covers highlights, milestones, things like that. But really, Blake, the, the ongoing um, highlight for me is the opportunity to hopefully bring some joy to your tabletop. That is... Uh, on an ongoing basis, day to day, every decision, everything I do, that is why I, that's why I do this. And um, so whenever I hear from anyone that something that we've done has brought them joy, um, especially on their tabletop, that means the world to me. That's, that's the highlight. That's, that's, that's why I do this. Yeah. 
Um, Genway says, will Tapestry have a storage solution for everything in the future? And yeah, we are, we are working on this. We did a poll about this recently. And what we've decided to do, I haven't talked about it much in detail yet because I don't have anything to show you. But um, what we've decided to do is make an insert, a special insert that will hold all tapestry stuff that fits into the original tapestry box because the original tapestry box is quite big it just doesn't organize the components in such a way with the various expansions for everything to fit in that box and so we have an organizer solution we're partnering with a, 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 a company that specializes in or, organizers a company called folded space um, and so we are working on a comprehensive uh, insert solution for the tapestry box that already exists we did consider making a new big box, but after a poll and some consideration, we realized the box is already big enough. We just need a better organizer solution. Kevin says, do I have the anniversary shirt to show? I do. I think I have the shirt. I think Joe sent it to me. Um, I wore this shirt today. Though. I, don't, I don't have the anniversary shirt yet to show. But if you're a champion, you may have seen it in an e-newsletter a month or so because we already gathered champion kind of request for sizes so that we could make the shirt and have the shirt ready for when uh, for when Smitten arrives and when or when it was supposed to arrive, when it will arrive in the future. Yeah. I think I have the shirt. Um, Darren says, what are the card sizes in Smitten? Are they Magic the Gathering size? I believe they are Magic the Gathering size. Yeah, I think they are, yeah, 63 by 88 millimeters. Um, I believe that is the card size for Smitten. So Molly mentioned the, the, the origin story for Smitten. She refers to it in, in her comment here. She says, uh, I remember collecting cards like that as well. And yeah, the, the story of Smitten, creating these grids of cards, comes from a childhood hobby that I had of collecting Marvel superhero cards. And there was a set where the cards fit together into three by three grids to form panorama images. I don't know if any of you remember that set, but I love that set. I love like collecting one, getting one card and then seeing hints of the adjacent cards, but not really knowing what they are and slowly filling them in and having that sense of completion when you complete the three by three grid. Smitten is built around that concept. You are com completing a three by three grid. And let's see if I can show you two cards side by side that, that make sense next to each other. Yeah, here's two of them. So. Um, there's some text blocking the image a little bit. Did I do that right? Yeah, I think that's right. Am I doing that? Yeah. Uh, so here are two of the cards uh, that, that tie together. So it's a single panorama, panorama image of a three by three grid. There's, there's a little bit of alignment there. And each of the cards has a hint at one of nine Stillmeyer games, and there's a big mech in the background. We thought about originally sending this out in different ways, like sending individual cards to fan to fans of Stillmeyer Games, customers of Stillmeyer Games, and having you like piece it together. But in the end, we were like, why don't we just make a game out of it? Why don't I make a game out of this idea and send you all the cards so you have them all at once? You don't have to like go scour for them on, on the internet. Yeah. But that is the the inception of it, that, that original Marvel comic book card set years ago. Chad says he's looking forward to in introducing Smitten to his wife, who is not a huge gamer. I can see this being a very easy intro to some gaming mechanisms. Yeah, I think I mean, it's a you know it's a two-player, one to two-player cooperative game. It plays in ten minutes. It's very simple to get at the table, very easy to play, and uh, yeah, I, I really I enjoyed plays of it. I, I had a lot of fun designing it and playing it, play testing it. It isn't the type of game that I normally design, but. Um, I thought, you know, why not try something a little different since it's a game specifically designed for our 10th anniversary celebration. Chad says, is there any meaning behind the name Smitten? So Smitten is a combination of a few words, SM for Stillmeyer Games, 10 for our 10th anniversary, and then the whole world word comes together because Smitten is often paired with the word kitten. And as you know, we love cats at Stillmeyer Games. So I haven't talked much. Well, let me try to catch up on questions, real other questions real quick. Then I'll come back over to Between Two Cities and talk about some of the other highlights in today's newsletter. Lots of cover today. Josh says, would, you, I, would I ever consider doing a bundle on the web store that includes all promo packs for, the, for Rolling Realms? We might use kind of a virtual bundle someday, Josh, where we say, okay, you click on this one button and you can get all the promo packs with that one click. But uh, I don't think we'll do... And we'll continue. We'll discount promo realms, especially when we release new promo realms, like the three new promo realms I have here. Um, we'll offer discounts for them. I don't know if we'll have like a preset bundle for them. Uh, I think we'll just offer them individually, like this. Uh, so we have a feast for Odin today. Um, 
we have Honey Buzz. And I say today, these are on the same ship with all these other things. So these things, these promos won't arrive for another week or so. And then of course we have the Smitten promo pack. I hadn't revealed this one yet, but Smitten's a Stillmeyer game, so it needs a promo pack. So all three of these promo realms are gonna be available all at once, once this shipment arrives in a week or so. And we'll let you know when they do. And uh, I think this is the method that we'll use for the most part moving forward, where we'll offer three promo packs for Rolling Realms all at once, because you need three promos to play a round of Rolling Realms. And today, uh, when am I doing it today? I think right after lunch. When did I? At around one o'clock today, I am going to do a live play of Rolling Realms. Today's, this week's live play will be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I'm going to play around with the new realms. I know no one else will be able to join me for this yet, unfortunately. Um, but I thought it might be a fun way of introducing how these realms work to you. That'll be on the Rolling Realms Facebook group. And then later on YouTube, later this afternoon on YouTube, I'll post uh, that live play. So you can see how these new realms work. Michael says, is this game also inspired by Button Shy Games? So Button Shy Games are, is known for 18 card games. Maybe subconsciously a, a little bit the 18 card concept, but uh, but really it was about what I what I designed for it, which was you know two three by three grids and creating these grids together with another player, um, and it, it's nice like it's nice to design cards in sets of nine because nine cards easily fit onto a single printable page, um, yeah. So any multiple of nine is fairly easy to uh, design around. Joshua says, how do we order the t-shirts? So the t-shirts will be available uh, for champions uh, once all these other products arrive uh, in a few weeks. We'll let you know when that, uh, we'll let champions know when that, when that happens. Jay says, will the folded space tapestry insert accommodate sleeves? Uh, we design all of our inserts always to accommodate sleeves, Jay. The, the answer is always, always yes. Javoy says that they just taught Pendulum in Viticulture World at the Harrisburg Game Day and had a great time. Both games were maxed out for players and people seemed to really enjoy themselves. Thank you so much for teaching them. I, I really, really appreciate that. And hopefully, hopefully you had fun at the, the Harrisburg Design Day. Or Game Day, not Design Day. Jamie says, will people be able to order a shirt even if they didn't fill out the previous request form? They will, yeah. Um, oh, Megan has the shirt for me here. Nope, no, that's the gray one. This is a blue one. This is a blue one. Um... Well, people, uh, yes, Jamie, the, the filling out the form isn't a requirement for, um, for getting the shirt, although it is possible that we will run out of the shirts, the champion shirts, if people who didn't fill out the request form um, ask for, end up ordering a shirt. However, we did order extras expecting that that was going to happen. Yeah, so we have extras. Treasure says, I just took a, a uh, screenshot of the shirt from the email. Would you like me to post it? You can if you want. Yeah, it's, specific it's specifically for champions. Um, but sure, you can share it. Maybe someone will want to become a champion so they can get the shirt. It's a blue shirt that has a, has a 10 on it. Uh, Tim is curious about the Jungle Fowl card that we just posted. Um, yeah, I, I've shared in the e-newsletter and on our website and in the Facebook group and the Summer Games Discord the new uh, teaser card from Wingspan Asia. And as always, we're not answering questions about these cards yet, but you're welcome to speculate about the information shown on these cards. So feel free to check out the card that we show, the spoiler card for Wingspan Asia that we showed today. Travis says, is it too late to become a champion and get a shirt? Uh, the shirts aren't available yet, so it's definitely not too late for, for, to get a shirt. And you're welcome to become a champion, summer champion, at any time you want. Um, and then you'll, you'll get uh, access to stuff like the shirt. We don't, the shirt is the only product that we specifically offer to champions. Um, otherwise, the main champion thing is that you get a 20% discount, you get some, uh, you, and, and you get shipping prioritized above non champion orders. Yeah. Tim asked, what is a tangible product? So, the, when Smitten becomes available, we are offering it for free with any tangible. Uh, web store order. Uh, we're using that language because if, for example, you order a digital diff gift card from our web store, um, Smitten won't come with that because we're including Smitten in orders that we need to ship to you. Uh, so we're Smitten, we're offering it for free. We're hoping not to lose money on it, um, and that's why we're offering it with something else that you order from the web store. Um, so if you order any any tangible thing from the web store that we need to ship to you. We'll include Smitten in it after Smitten actually arrives. Again, it has not arrived yet, so we can't do that for any web store order yet. 
So if you want to order something from our web store, hold off for a week or so until Smitten arrives so that you can get it for free. Andrew says, is there a preview of the champion shirt? We did include it on a previous champion newsletter, and it sounds like someone might post an image of it in the comments here. Uh, someone says, what's my favorite Smitten card? Well, definitely the one with the, the cats on it. There's a little... There's one of the cards with uh, yeah, the one with the cats on it. We weren't sure to do what, what, what to do for Between Two Cities. You can see a hint of the city in the background, but that's Biddy and Walter on the card itself. All right, let's go over to Between Two Cities real quick and talk about other stuff from the newsletter. So we decided to consolidate the things in Between Two Cities into one box. So originally we had Between Two Cities and we had the Capitals expansion. And... Um, between Two Cities is maybe a little bit lighter of a game than we would normally offer. We specialize in medium weight Euro games. And so by bringing the Capitals expansion or elements of it into the core game itself, so they are now part of the core game of Between Two Cities, uh, it bumps the game up to a medium weight Euro. Still a shorter game than many of our games. It plays in around you know, 30, 35 minutes. But one of the big perks of this, in my opinion, of, of doing so, we have new consolidated rule books that come with this. Uh, instead of a, a score track, this is the only component that's, that's, I would say, significantly different than the original. We have a score pad instead of the score track in the original. But the, the, one of the things I'm most excited about is that the landscape mats, which bring a lot of color and life to your cities that you're building in between two cities, they are now part of the core game instead of something that is, comes with, uh, with uh, the, the Capitals expansion. So um, they are part of the core game now, the core game experience. And I'll show you what the box looks like inside here for Between Two Cities. You can see this is the new box. You have the tiles all in one, all one big pit right here. You have the duplex tiles over here. And you have your, your tokens here in biodegradable plastic bags. Um, and all the tiles are just shuffled together. So we have a tile. Let's see if I can find one real quick. Yeah, here is a Civic tile. This is one of the other elements that was part of the Capitals expansion that is just part of the core game now. These new Civic tiles. Or not, not new, but part of the... Civic tiles were part of the Capitals expansion. The only part of the Capitals expansion that we included but don't declare as essential is the districts or the districts. So the district tiles, um, these were kind of a collective goal that players could go after. We've included it as an advanced variant in the game, but it is not part of the core gameplay experience for Between Two Cities Essential Edition. As I mentioned, the full rule book is linked on our web store or our website, not our web store yet. And this is on the ship. It has not arrived yet, but it should arrive within a week or so. And when it does, we'll let you know if you subscribe to us as a champion or to our main e-newsletter. Um, Clint says, Clint asks, will Smitten always be free or will it be can, will be available per, separately by retail. So Smitten is a web store only product. I, I don't think this will be a, re, a retail product, although we will sell, there are retailers who buy directly from us. We will make Smitten available to them, or most likely we will. I think we will, we don't know yet. Um, but it will definitely be a web store product. It will be $10 after the anniversary month. Uh, so whenever it arrives, it will be free with any web store order for about 10 days, maybe a couple weeks. And then after that, it will be a $10 thing that you can order from our web store whenever you want. Yeah. So it will be available in the future if we have copies yet. And we'll make more if, if it really does, we run out, but we made a lot of copies of it. Let's see. Um, George says, are the tiles in between two cities different now? Like the art or the sides color? So that, that's a good question. Yeah, we used, it's, it's very subtle. Um, but we use slightly, so it's art that, you know, it looks nearly identical to the original art, but we changed, uh, we, we used brighter buildings basically for the art, the building art and around the borders, uh, we changed the borders of the tiles a little bit so that, uh, the city wouldn't look so gray when it's on the table. That's the one I think downside of between two cities that, when, when all these tiles are next to each other on the table, it ends up looking pretty gray, uh, which is something that we didn't expect to happen with the game. And so we changed the borders a little bit to make it look less dull, less gray, a little brighter on the table. Eric says, can I show the meeples for Between Two Cities? Sure, I can hold them up. They're also noted in the rule book. And I can publicly mention a mistake here. In fact, I, I have them in the, uh, in the rule book right here. It's a little easier to hold up than a bunch of meeples. So these are the are the the tokens as we put in the rule book. However, 
Um, due to a communication mistake, this token didn't even end up in the game. I wanted it in the game because I play red, but uh, it didn't actually make it in the game. It made it in the rule book and the back of the box, but not the game. Instead, the Colosseum ended up in the game itself. So uh, the Colosseum is the token in the game instead of the, the mine. Archer has a question. Do you have some tips on how to set up blind playtest groups for a new designer? That is, people who, that don't have easy access to random people. Do you think it's best to aim for print and play to share online or one to two better made prototypes for physical gatherings like conventions, board game cafes? I'd say a combination of the two is probably a good strategy. Um, I, it's hard for me to recommend ways to set up blind playtest groups, but I think I'll, being generous with your time as a playtester is one way to do that. So be vocal, be generous with, with your time in online communities and in person communities like meetups about, as a playtester yourself. And then hopefully people will reciprocate and offer to playtest for you as well. And yeah, the, the easier you can make it for them to get the game to the table, whether it's a, an easy to make, easy to make or assemble print and play or, um, or something that you've already put together and presented at a convention, uh, the better, yeah. Ivan says that he found Euphoria on sale. Any tips on how to teach the rules to his group easier? There are actually some teaching tips in the rulebook itself, because I realize that Euphoria is a little bit difficult to teach. And so on, I think the last page of the rulebook, maybe the second to last page, there's some rules about how to teach. And I, one of the big things I recommend is blocking off a bunch of the board and just focusing on one section of the board and saying, this is how a commodity area works. This is how a, 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 a resource tunnel area works um, and th th these are how the markets work and then reveal the rest of the board by focusing like that there's a lot of distractions on the board and so if you focus like that I think that can help teach it also I have a video about how to teach euphoria so feel free to look, look up that video that explains a little bit easier how to uh, how to teach the game Jamie says, what is in the original version and expansion for Between Two Cities, but not in the Essential Edition? So the, the, really the only thing um, that's in the original version that isn't in this version is the, uh, the score track. It's a big board with the, the score track. Instead, we included a big score pad. And it is a big score pad. Joe, I remember when Joe reviewed this, he was like, does this need to be so big? Maybe not. But we wanted players to be able to write their city score or one of their city score really, really big here so that the entire table can see it. Um, because that's when you'll figure out whose city, which, which of your two cities score and what is the winning score at the table. So that's the one component that's different from the original. And also the original had, because it had this, the score board, it had two of each token, two of each uh, wooden meeple building token, and we don't have the scoreboard. So there's only one of each now instead of a pair of each. Uh, Molly says, well, Smitten and Between Two Cities have first print run numbers. You know, we didn't do that for this one. Uh, we didn't do first print run numbers for uh, for spinning in between two cities. We often do that, but we don't do it for every new product. Yeah. William says that he likes the new uh, box art and diversity from between two cities. Thank you, William. I appreciate that. Um, I like what the artist did a lot here as well. The artist of the box is Asi Hekala. He did the art for the box, and he actually did the art for the box a long time ago. There was another publisher that wanted uh, Between Two Cities, wanted to publish it, I believe, in maybe Norway. And then they ended up just, uh, they, they commissioned art for it. I talked to the artist about it, and they ended up not making the game. And so when we when it came time to make Between Two Cities Essential Edition, I reached out to the artist because I remember really liking the art. And I was like, do you have the rights to this art? Is this your art? Can we... Could we commission it from you to, to use for the game? And he, he let us do that. And yeah, I, I love it too. I, I, I really like the look of it. I like the original Between Two Cities box art from Beth Sobel as well. Um, but I just wanted something distinctly different for this. But we still found a way to slip in that original box art to pay homage to it. It's on the backs of the landscape mats. So what else happened in our news in there? I'll come back for questions in a second. Talked about Smitten, talked about Between Two Cities, the three Rolling Realms promos. And again, these three products will be available soon, whenever they actually arrive. Um, should be a week or so. And you'll hear from us then if you subscribe to our Champion Newsletter or, or Facebook page. I'll post it here as well, or our monthly e-newsletter. At that time, once these products go live, uh, any web store order will include Smitten for free for about 10 to 14 days. And uh, you'll also get a 10% discount. So really, I know this is not good business, but don't order anything from our web store right now. Instead, wait until these products arrive. 
a week or so and that way you'll get a 10 percent discount on any web store order and that's in addition to the 20 percent discount that you get as a champion if you're some our champion so it'll be a, a pretty big sale on our web store um the other things i mentioned are the video the, the brief history history video and there's a fun little thing at the end of the uh the newsletter uh, or the main description here is some fans of Stonemaier Games and some people who are involved with the company made a how well do you know Stonemaier Games quiz. That's in the e newsletter. Let me know in the comments here if you've taken the quiz and what score you got. I actually didn't even get a perfect score. I thought I was going to get an 18 out of 20 because there's one, there's one question that I was a little, little on the fence about. I ended up getting a 19 out of 20. I'm one of, I think, only two people to get that score so far. And uh, the question, there's a, there's a trick question that tricked me up. Um, that, that I thought was a trivia question and it wasn't. It's actually just a trick question. So let me know what score you get in the How Well Do You Know Stomar Games quiz that's linked in our e-newsletter. Let's see what the results are right now. If anyone else has gotten, I have it up on the screen. We'll see if anyone else has gotten a, well, if, we'll see if anyone's gotten a perfect score. I don't think there's any perfect scores yet. Let's see, close to a thousand responses now. Um, I don't see any perfect scores. I see still two scores of 19 out of 20. Yeah, the average right now is around seven. Only seven out of 20 is the average. Oh no, average is eight, 8.45. Um, we also, okay, so Mark mentioned something else here. We have a new rule book that Carol Tateka, the, uh, the lead designer now of the Rolling Realms promos, Carol put together a, uh, a consolidated promos rule book for rolling realms this will be a living rule book that we add to as we add new promos and it's on our website now we're also working on a promo page on the website that let's see it's not live yet dave's working on it but we're gonna have a promo page on the website where um you can go to one place and see all the promos all in one place because we have so many of them in the works but um they'll, they'll all be there along with a link to the consolidated rule book uh, the consolidated rulebook is just for all the realms. It's actually not just for the promos. It's for all the realms. It just describes the the specifics of any given realm in uh, in the in this digital rulebook. Oh, Simon says he recognized Ossie's work on Between Two Cities Essential Edition after working with him on Tinner's Trail. Oh, that's awesome, Simon. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I did, I can kind of picture Tinner's Trail art in my in my mind, and it's a very distinct art style. I really really like. It. It's kind of a classic art style um but yeah Aussie's is really cool arthur says uh do we already have a ballpark date for, date for the wingspan big box we've been saying q4 2020 to 2022 not 2020 uh the wingspan nesting box will be available at the same time as wingspan asia and uh, i think what what it's currently looking like is that i will do the the reveal for those products well, nesting box is already revealed, but I'll do the reveal for Wingspan Asia in early October, and then we'll do the pre-order in November. That's currently the plan. That might change, though, depending on freight shipping. As we know from today, uh, freight shipping is still a little weird right now. Arthur says, can I wait to order a Stomar Games, Stomar Champion t-shirt until then? I think we'll probably be sold out of the t-shirt by then. Uh, maybe we'll still have it in stock, but I think it's unlikely. I think your best chance to get the champion t-shirt will be in mid-September when we uh, when we launch all these products on our web store. And the 10% discount will only be available. So the, the free smitten and the 10% discount will be available through the end of September once we launch these products. Yeah, I know it's confusing. I'm sorry about that. I, I really wish we could have launched all these things today, but we, we don't want to... We didn't want to hold up all these orders while waiting for Spinton to arrive. So we'd rather have, uh, you know, not not make you wait for these things, um, even though we are essentially waiting, making you wait for these things. Holly says, well, will we be selling the Between Two Cities Essentials box for those that already have the base game and the expansion already? Uh, I appreciate you asking, Holly, but no, I mean, the only boxes that we have for any product have full games inside of them. And so I, I appreciate that, the, that you like the box, that you want it. But um, the only way that we'll sell it is, is with a game inside. However, if you already have Between Two Cities and you have Capitals, you don't, you don't need any of this. Uh, th this is just a consolidated version of, of the things that you already have. Yeah. George says, any updates on the two new golf, uh, disc golf discs arriving in the EU shop? Or at least some old but different ones from the old batch. batch. You know, I think Joe mentioned that they are arriving soon. Joe, if you're watching this, uh, feel free to post an update about that. Um, 
I don't, I don't have a specific update, but whenever they arrive, if you've signed up for a back in stock notification, we'll let you know. Although that doesn't help you for new discs. Um, yeah, what's a way, good way to do that, George? I mean, yeah, I, you might just have to keep checking a little bit. But if there are any discs that are out of stock there, um, I think that's the best way to get a notification. But maybe, you know, I'll talk to Joe about that. I'll see what Joe is doing with that. Because we might, if there are some discs on the way, we might post them there as out of stock. And that way you can sign up for an in-stock notification when they actually arrive. I'll ask Joe about that. Which discs are on the way right now. Um, just scrolling here looking for comments right now. I, I have a few other things to discuss from the e-news that are including the... Oh, I, I don't have the card in front of me, um, but if you look at, at the e-news e letter, you can see the red Jungle Fowl card, the teaser card from Wingspan, Wingspan Asia. Uh, and yeah, it looks like in the e-news letter, sorry for the confusion, I we did... So we scrambled and edited a lot of this stuff yesterday, but we left in links... Um, yeah, yeah, we missed this in editing. So there are links to products that we don't have yet, including uh, the Between Two Cities Essential Edition and the Rolling Realms promo packs. And the orders, so we don't have Smitten yet. So any order you place today won't have Smitten in it yet. Um, I am sorry that we missed that in all the scramble yesterday to, to edit the newsletter. But hopefully people will read the top half of the newsletter, which I think says very, in very bold letters that, um, that uh, these products haven't arrived yet. Dusty says that he got 16 out of 20 of the questions for the How Well Do You Know Stomar Games quiz. He says, is this sponsorship at risk? No, it's not. Never at risk there, Dusty. Let's see some other score. I think Dusty's the highest score I'm seeing in the comments so far, and he got a 16. Craig says, I'm holding out on buying side for when the legendary box comes back in stock. as a reprint of that box planned for the future. Craig, that's one that depends on freight shipping. I don't think we have any in route right now. Uh, or in progress, but I will check right now. But uh, yeah, the legendary box is is a tough thing to make. Yeah, we don't have any any in progress right now because uh, because of freight shipping costs. It's just it's it's too expensive. Um, we, we would have to significantly increase the cost for it to make sense at this point. So we're kind of waiting for those freight shipping costs to go down a little bit. Carol says that two people have actually scored a perfect score of 2020 on the quiz. Yeah, I guess that's not showing up on the, uh, the little chart that, that I'm seeing, but Carol would know. And yeah, congratulations to those two people who've gotten 20 out of 20. That's impressive. <laughs> what else is going on here today? Uh, <laughs> Jamie says, those early links let me see your amusing 404 page. Yeah, we do have kind of a silly 404 page if you click on one of those links and see that something isn't available. Maybe we should update that right now so people know. Yeah, it's, it uses a tile from uh, from uh, between two uh, from tapestry. Sorry. Arthur says, "How did your big box design evolve between the scythe one, the viticulture one, and the wingspan one? Any lessons learned?" Ooh, that's a good question. Um, so I did. I, I kind of designed two boxes simultaneously. I designed the wingspan nesting box very publicly with people, and I did the viticulture box as a surprise for people. And both actually, I think for the most part, worked out pretty well. Um, but I think I may have enjoyed the public process a little bit more. Uh, I got some great feedback, I think, about publicly posting the nesting box. So I think if we do another big box in the future, big empty box, we don't do big boxes containing all the all gameplay stuff. But if we do another big organizer box someday, I'll probably make it a public process so we can just talk about it and be completely open about it and make sure that people get the thing that they want. Not everyone will always be happy, there, but we're going to try to please as many people as possible given the, the nature of these organizer box products. Chad says, did you, uh, did you have a favorite co uh, comic character while you were collecting the card? So he's referring to this, the inspiration for Spitten, which were uh, these pan panorama Marvel comic book cards. I don't remember a specific card um, or even a specific panorama. So no, I don't have a specific in mind, specific card. I, I did always like fast characters though. So I liked like Quicksilver. I thought he was, he was really cool. Yeah. So Joe clarified here. He says the signature disc in Europe the restock recently arrived. We added the Between Two Trees disc to the selection as soon as it was being shipped, and it's still in stock. The Scythe and Wingspan discs are also currently in stock. Okay, thank you, Joe, for chiming in with that. And we will add more in the future as well. 
Andrew says, will the scythe and neoprene mat become available again? You know, I hadn't realized, Andrew, that it was out of stock. Uh, what area are you in? So we can look into that. Um, we And I should note that we, due to our agreement with uh, Lizard Den, I think is the company, we don't sell the scythe neoprene mat in the U.S. or in um, or in Canada. We can find links to that on our website. So if you're looking there, if you're looking in one of those two areas, you'll you won't find it from us. You'll find it from a, another company. But if you are not in those areas, we should have it on our web store. So let me know where you are so we can check into the the out of stock nature of that. What else is going on? So I've covered a lot of newsletter stuff today. Um, Let's see what else is happening here. Uh, again, today I'm going to do a Rolling Realms live play in a few hours. I think it'll be it'll be after lunch. I don't know, probably 12.30, 12, 1 o'clock uh, Central Time is when I'll do the live play. I'll make a note about that so I don't forget, but I do have a live play. I have a vet appointment later today this afternoon that's been in my mind. Um, I did a post recently about wages and inflation and how we are increasing our... Uh, default amount that we pay any any freelancer for a, like a little contract task or, or, or job um, up to $25 per hour to uh, help account for inflation and also did a post that tells the entire Rolling Realm story so that was a post that I made last Thursday so if you're curious about kind of the, the journey through Rolling Realms how it's evolved all the things that the surprises that have happened along the way that's a post from Friday my video this past week was my twice annual favorite games as of right now. So my top 10 favorite games of all time as of right now. That was the video that I posted this past Sunday. That was fun to do. And we'll have a bunch of videos that went live this morning. I have videos about, about Between Two Cities Essential, a video about Smitten. I have a brief history video that went live today. And then of course, this video will also be live on YouTube. You might be watching it on YouTube right now. Um, I also, speaking of cities and castles and things like that, I played my Between Two, or not my Between Two, my the Castles of Madkin Ludwig Collector's Edition. I played that at game night for the first time this past Wednesday with five players. It can now go up to five players and had a blast with it. Really, really great game. One of my favorite games of all time that I haven't played in a few years because I was waiting on the, this new edition and I had a blast with it. Really, really had a, fun, a lot of fun with it. Also been doing some copy editing for a project that we're working on here or, or talking to copy editors and, and uh, going over copy editor feedback. Um, and then all other little odds and ends preparing for today. Today it was meant and still is meant to be a big day for our anniversary celebration. Just not quite the kickoff we had hoped because the products haven't actually arrived yet. But they will arrive soon and we will let you know when they do. Um, okay, Andrew says uh, he lives in Canada. That's why he, he doesn't see the scythe neoprene mat in our... Okay, Ink Gaming. Thank you, Joe. Lizard Dead wasn't the right company. Lizard Dead makes another third-party accessory. Ink Gaming is the company that makes the scythe neoprene mat in Canada, for Canada and the US. Otherwise, if you're elsewhere, we sell the mat on our web store. But our agreement for, with them says that they sell it in North America, um, including Mexico too. Then. Dusty says, I just wanted to mention that your work on sustainable practices is getting noticed. Pandasaurus has a campaign running for Elizabeth's new game, The Fox Experiment, and there are several comments over there about um, the disappointment in the amount of plastic used and requested wood tokens. I know that that isn't your wish. Yeah, I'm not looking for negativity, um, but I'm sure gamers requesting more responsibly sourced, sourced materials is a positive. Yeah, and hopefully they do that in a positive, constructive way. Um, there are pros to, there are times where plastic components do make sense, but in general, I think, uh, I think wood and paper is more sustainable than plastic. And so we are seeking to do that more and more often. However, I should be very clear that if we have a game that needs a plastic component for the experience, for the, the, the user experience, we're going to use a plastic component. Like there will be times in the future where we have miniatures in our games. And because it, if, if we think the game benefits significantly, the game's experience benefits significantly from a, mini, from a miniature. And in that case, it's going to be a plastic component. So um, it's something that we're striving for. But uh, in the end, our goal is to bring joy to you. I think part of that is eco-friendliness. Part of that is accessibility, all those things that we think about. Um, but also part of the experience is, you know, the, the tactile, the tangible, the, the, the aesthetic experience of getting a board game to the table. Oh, Alex says that Quicksilver, my coworker Alex says, Quicksilver was his favorite character when he played the Overpower card game as a kid. Uh, that's awesome. I never played Overpower. I just kind of collected the cards uh, to, to put them in binders and things like that. We never did anything with them. But 
that's cool that there was uh I think there have been several Marvel collectible games now, including Overpower. Mark says he'll appreciate the additional 10% discount soon. With the exchange rate of pesos to dollars going up, it's quite expensive to get the new releases. I'm sorry to hear that, Mark. Yeah, exchange rates are and inflation are, you know, out of control right now. Um, and so we're trying our best to combat that by not really increasing prices, by in decreasing prices by offering the 10% discount that will start once these products arrive. Um, Mark says, are we going to, yeah, I need to make a, make a note about that one second. Mark says, are we going to see live plays of Smitten too? Could I do a live play of Smitten? Um, I guess I could. It requires partnership, which might be tough. Yeah. I don't really have the camera set up to do it, but I'm sure, well, I hope there will be a content creator that does that. Maybe Dusty at the mill will do one. He has a better video set up than I do. Some sort of live play of Smitten or it wouldn't be live play, but it would be a, a play of Smitten. Chad says, not to distract from Stillmeyer Game stuff. No worries. We can talk about anything here. Anything you want. Uh, he says, have you seen anything about the new game Revive? It looks really good and gives me a lot of Stillmeyer Game feels. I've seen some early reviews of it, um, uh, but that's all so far. Is it available on Kickstarter or crowdfunding? Is it available anywhere yet or, uh, or available in retail? I, I've been seeing reviews, but haven't seen exactly how to get it yet. or haven't looked into it yet. Molly says you could bring Susanna back to play Smitten. I do want to have Susanna back for a video. Uh, I talked to Susanna about maybe doing her top 10 favorite things about retailers uh, or reasons to, to buy games from retailers, things like that. Uh, so Susanna is kind of brainstorming a possible list for that. Uh, we got a lot of positive feedback about having Susanna join me for her top 10 favorite games list. And really, I'd like to have more people join me on camera from time to time for those top 10 lists. Um, and ideally, I want them to join me here in my, my, in my home office for that. That's, I think, the, the most seamless way to do it rather than having like a Zoom call, which I can do. I have done that a few times in the past. But um, yeah, so perhaps. I think the tough thing about Smitten is that you have to see what's on the table. And I, I don't really have a great camera set up for that. I guess I could do it the way I do it for Rolling Realms where I point the camera at the table. I don't know. It requires a lot more coordination than just playing a round of Rolling Realms, which I will do this afternoon in a few hours. Cameron says, as someone who published an 18-card game recently, he's excited to pick up a copy of Smitten. Yeah, Cameron, I think that the 18-card format is nice, or anything that's a multiple of nine is nice, because it's easy to print out nine cards and playtest nine cards. Chad says he hasn't seen Revive being available anywhere. I hear it's going to be at PAX, um, a convention that's coming up soon. Okay, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think the one other thing about Revive that, that I wasn't sure about is that it I think it might be a campaign game, um, and I have I, I have so many campaign games on their way, or in progress, or will be on their way in the next year. That I am kind of putting a hold on buying more campaign games at this time. However, I did buy back not a campaign game, but I backed the Fox Experiment from uh, Elizabeth Hargrave and Pantasaurus. I'm really excited about that. Um, so, still, I'm buying games, checking out new games, just not necessarily campaign games right now. Dusty says, uh, Morton was bragging about the solo mode in Smitten. There is a solo mode in Smitten. And said it's the first Tomorrow game that allows you to just read the solo rules without needing to read the multiplayer rules. That's true. Yeah, in fact, we note that on the rulebook itself in Smitten. So there's the two-player side of the rulebook right here. And on this side, it says there's no need to read the two-player rules to learn the solo mode because we... Just were able to, or Morton was able to consolidate them all into this single page of, of rules for the solo mode. I think that's pretty cool. More solo friendly. Javoy says, you mentioned being excited for the Rings of Power last week. I just watched it on Friday and loved it. Really excited for more. And as a huge Tolkien Lord of the Rings fan, I wish there were less negativity among the diehards. This looks like a great opportunity to bring in some new fans in the world. I think that's beautifully said. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I wrote a blog post about it and I definitely did not want to dwell in the, what I perceive as, a racist point of view um, from some people who maybe claim to be diehards. I don't know if they actually are or if they're just racist. I don't know. But uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. I love the way you said it. It's a great opportunity to bring in some new fans into the Lord of the Rings world. That was my impression. I love Lord of the Rings. In fact, we, we went, Megan and I went to New Zealand a few years ago because we wanted to feel like we were in Middle Earth for a little while. Um, we went to a bunch of sites where they filmed different scenes from Lord of the Rings. 
we love Lord of the Rings, and so far, I, I'm really loving this show. It's beautiful. Like the the production value on this show is incredible. It, it feels like movie quality to me, and I love the casting. I think the casting's beautiful. Um, I, I'm loving everything about the show so far. Also, really enjoying the new Game of Thrones show. We watched the third episode yesterday. And we're also watching Loot on Apple TV. We're watching She-Hulk week to week on Disney Plus. And watching Westworld, Westworld season four. We're a little bit behind on that, but we're watching that right now as well. I even says House of Dragon or Rings of Power. And I say both. Uh, why, why choose one? I am enjoying both for different reasons, but I'm, I'm really enjoying both of them so far. Uh, Dusty really enjoyed the Fox experiment at Gen Con. That's awesome, Dusty. Yeah, that you get to play it. It'll be a while before I get to play it because I don't think the Kickstarter will deliver for quite some time. But at least the game, I think, is done or very close to being done. So uh, that's that's always a good thing to, to know when you back a Kickstarter. I'm also backing, just a shout out to a friend in case I haven't mentioned this yet, but I am backing, uh, I did back one campaign game recently. I backed uh, Robomon, Robomon on GameFound for my friend game, Gabe Barrett, who... Uh, uh, great game designer, great podcaster. That game is up on um, on GameFound right now. Chad says he's he loves the Rings of Powers as well so far, and Molly says she loves it as well. It's a, she. Uh, Chad says it's a tad slow, but I think they are really building up for something big. There is an interesting pace into it, and actually, it's distinctly different than um, the Game of Thrones show, which is jumping forward every every episode by months or years, sometimes at a time. Like they're not wasting any time to tell a big epic story, but um, but I still I, I like I like how both shows are doing it. I, I'm I'm really am enjoying both shows, and it feels like I don't know I I feel incredibly lucky as a fan of science fiction and fantasy right now. To be in a world where I can turn on my TV and have a show of that quality on the television is just astounding to me. Um, the, the, that production quality uh, is yeah, inc absolutely incredible. And week to week, and th this is one of the things about, about TV shows to movies. I love movies, and I love and miss going to the movie theater. And I've gone a few times over the last year, but, but not much. I do love movies, but being able to watch a, a show that's that of that scale and that nature, that, that, uh, that level of beauty... And then get to watch another one the next week and another one the next week. It's like a, a movie series coming out week to week, which is just incredible to me. I, I feel very fortunate that, that, that we're getting this level of quality from shows right now. Um, Mark says, in designing board games, what do you do when you hit a mental block? Like ideas are just not flowing. So Mark, my trick for this is to have two designs going at any given time. And so... It is exceptionally rare that I am not excited about one of those designs. But if I'm excited about, usually like if I am feeling myself getting a little burned out or uh, I don't have any new ideas or I'm just down on one of the designs for any given reason, then I'll put it aside and I'll focus on the other game and get excited about that and kind of give myself permission to get excited about it and won't focus on one um, over the other. And then I'll switch back and forth. And that really, really helps me from getting burned out on any given design. That's the trick that I use. Uh, and then the, I guess the rare occasion where neither game excites me, then I also give myself permission to not work on any of them and just brainstorm other fun ideas. I go to my long list of ideas for themes and mechanisms and games, and I just kind of brainstorm for a little bit. Pencil, paper, just have fun. Not putting the pressure on myself to actually create anything, but just have fun with the brainstorming process. And that can be really freeing um, for me to do that. Yeah. Cameron says the Fox experiment is set to fulfill in May of next year. Okay, so it does sound like they are ready to go to print as soon as this campaign is over, which is awesome. Love hearing that. Joshua says he finally had a chance to see everything everywhere all at once, which I believe you highly recommended in the past. I recommend it to anyone else. Thank you, Joshua, for mentioning, for mentioning that. I'm wondering, is it available on streaming at this point? Because I do look forward to watching that again. That's one of the rare exceptions for me that I went to the theater to see that movie when it came out earlier this year. And I loved it. Like it. Yeah, just I'm, I'm getting almost choked up thinking about it because the show it's such like a, an amazing action movie, but it's so emotional. Like we were wearing masks in the movie theater and Megan and I were sobbing. Our masks were just like wet with tears from multiple moments in the in the movie. This is everything everywhere all at once. I highly recommend it. I will say that it is um, graphic at times, not even necessarily gory graphic, but Graphic in ways that you kind of just want to be aware of that it is an R-rated movie. And uh, it's it's weird. It's a weird movie. But I, I think it's definitely worth seeing um, if you like movies about 
I don't want want to spoil anything. It's It's a crazy, zany action movie that's incredible. Yeah. Josh says, did I see Dawn of Ulus on Kickstarter? And I did. In fact, there were two games that launched recently that have, um, that that intrigued me that I'm looking into, but I haven't backed it yet. Uh, I do love the role player universe and I, I love what Keith has created at Thunderworks Games. Um, I haven't backed it yet. It, I, I wasn't sure if it was a game spe- for me, um, but I am looking at it. Uh, what, what's, what are you the most excited about it, Josh? Have you played it? What, what, are, you, what are you digging about Dawn of Ulus? Paul says, based on your shipping schedule for the 10th anniversary stuff, can you reveal that the Wingspan big boxes are currently on a ship in the Pacific? Uh, I, I I don't want to say anything that isn't necessarily true, uh, Paul. So I know that freight shipping for the Wingspan nesting box and Wingspan Asia is in progress. Those ships are on the move to fulfillment centers. And I think you don't even have to take my word for it. It's on our progress chart on our website right now. Um, that, that freight shipping is in progress for the Wingspan Asia expansion. Um, actually, that no, looks like final. Yeah, the, the freight shipping is in progress for it to, over to our fulfillment centers. That means that it can take months, but we're hoping that it will be, or that it will have arrived well before when I'm hoping to do the pre order, which is early November. Um, uh, Okay, so people are saying that everything, everything, everywhere, all at once is video on demand right now. So you, you can pay for it to rent the movie or, or buy it or rent it, but it's not available for free streaming yet on a paid subscription service yet. Oh, Adam says, to celebrate your 10th anniversary, my, his wife and him drafted the Perfect Five Stillmeyer Collection. Uh, he says, she picked Viticulture, Wingspan, Between Two Castles, Euphoria, and My Little Scythe. And he picked Tapestry, Scythe, Libertalia, Ruling Realms, and Charterstone. I love the uh, the question here. For anyone who can see this image in the comments, the folks at the Tabletop family stacked games and products into two different categories. And you can pick your which five you would pick for a uh, Stomar Games weekend gaming of, of Stomar Games. So feel free to pick one of them if you want. That's a fun little thing. Also, I want to give a shout out to nacho average tabletop which is doing a stone stone timber month where all their videos focus on stonemaier games stuff i really appreciate them doing that um and i do have a chat with them scheduled for later this week where we'll talk about all the stuff that i revealed today and i think they'll put that live uh, soon afterwards on their youtube channel or their their podcast so that's nacho average tabletop if anyone wants to post a link to that in the comments below I think I've covered everything for today. Everything's in the e-newsletter about the Between Two Cities Essential Edition, about Smitten, which I've disassembled here a little bit. Let's put this back together. So Smitten, the game that I designed specifically for our 10th anniversary, and the three Rolling Realms. Here's Smitten. There we go. There's Smitten. And the three Rolling Realms promo packs. The only, And uh, so when these products arrive, any web store order you place will include Smitten for free. You won't need to add it to your cart. It will automatically be added to your cart. If you really don't want it, you can remove it from your cart. And uh, also at that point, we'll activate the 10% discount for all web store orders. For now though, you can watch the videos that I posted today on the YouTube channel and you can take the How Well Do You Know Still Mario Games quiz. That's the stuff that's available today. Chad says, am I reading any good books lately? I am reading a book that I'm blanking on the name of. Uh, it's a book about gins, like uh, genie, genie style gins. Uh, oh, it's called The Sand Sea Chronicles, maybe? Something about Sand Sea. I'm reading the fir- first book in a trilogy there. Um, Chad says, the next book I'm excited about is Howl's Moving Castle. I never knew about the, the movie was based on a book. Yeah, I think actually all of the, the Miyazaki films are based on books. I don't know if they're novels though, or if they are uh, children's books. I actually don't know that, but I know they're based on books. Patrick says, speaking of role player, I picked it up this week after watching you speak about it in older videos. Have you played it with the expansions? And if so, what did you think? I have played at least one of the role player expansions um, and played role player adventures, which I truly love. Love role player adventures, and I also love role player. For role player, though, I love the experience out of the box. I think the expansions are okay. Like you're basically doing something with your character. You're fighting some some things with your character. But I love the experience of role player just being there to design to create a character in, a, in this puzzly way with dice. I like that, and so 
I have never bought one of the expansions. Some people say that they're essential. I don't think so. I think role player by itself is essential. But if you do play role player and you find yourself really, really wanting to do something with that character, feel free to check out one of the expansions. I think they might satisfy that uh, that desire. But you can also kind of do it. Well, it's it's role player adventures is different because you're not doing any any of the the puzzly dice things with your character itself. The dice puzzle comes in with the skill checks and the combat. Yeah. Mark says. Stardust Thief. Thief. Yes, thank you, Adam. I think that is the name of the book, the Sand Seed Chronicles. The first book is called The Stardust Thief. Mark says, just wondering if you'll ever announce the answers for the riddles you've given in the January 2022 e-newsletter. I think so eventually, um, once all of the answers are out there, uh, which I don't know will be within 2022. Trash says, uh, talking about the dawn of Ulos, it seems like it has a good bidding system. He said, I watched Before You Play's video and it seemed pretty fun. It also has a decent price point, not as expensive, expensive as I would have guessed it would have been. I think Thunderworks does a good job about that, about pricing things in a very uh, fair way. All right, I'm excited about having some Mexican food for lunch today. Got some, some Mexican food waiting for me. So I'm going to do that. And then feel free to join me later this afternoon on YouTube or the Rolling Realms Facebook group for a live play where I reveal what these three realms are all about. Well, you can also spoil it by going to check out the consolidated rule book for the promos that's on our website. But yeah, I'm excited to show you how these work on video in the Rolling Realms Facebook group in a few hours. I'll see you then. Thank you for joining me today for the beginning of our 10th anniversary celebration and for being here however long you've been with us and however long you're with us in the future. I'm really grateful for it. And uh, yeah, I look forward to actually sharing these products with you for real when they arrive in the very near future. Thanks. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.